So uh, this is the part where we have to talk about the Facebook ad system because the double-edged sword of Facebook is that there's so many people to reach, but there are so many people to reach. There's so many people out there. Even though I narrowed down my range down to like 500 million or something, that's still a lot of potential people to reach. And here's the dirty secret of Facebook. In the old days, one like equaled one follower. So if I follow someone on Twitter, that means I want to see their tweets. So I'll see their tweets. If I follow someone on Pinterest, that means I wanted to see their pins. If I follow someone on Instagram, that means I want to see their pins. And on Facebook, it used to be the same thing. They called it a like. Like my page on Facebook. Remember that. So it used to be that when someone liked your page, that's, that was a follow. I want to see what you've posted on Facebook. Then in, nowadays, one like does not equal one follower. I may have 500 likes on Facebook. That does not mean those 500 people will see my post, even though they've chosen to see it, even though they've liked, even though they like my stuff and they want to see it. Facebook's algorithm, Facebook's computer system has decided, and the people running it has decided, have decided that it's going to be better that people don't see a post, especially from a business. So on the one hand, that makes sense. I don't want to see all these ads from businesses. I want to see stuff from my friends and family. I followed 10 businesses, but it's only going to show me some of them. I don't know how many. It depends on the time of day. It depends on the phases of the moon. It depends on something. Something happens. The algorithm of Facebook determines. You have 10 followers. Six of them saw your post today. One saw it tomorrow. Ten saw it next time. Something determines your visibility. Some trade secret that I don't know, that I'm, I'm not trying to hold back. I just, I don't know it. There's a trade secret that Facebook decides on your content being visible. Because they've decided, we don't, you know, people don't like to see all of these ads, so we're not going to display all of these Facebook posts, which are often ads from a business. Well, guess what? The way to fix this, the way to reach all 10 of your followers again, and 100 more, is to pay. So this is strike, what are we on? Strike five for <laughs> Facebook today. The way to use Facebook effectively nowadays is to pay. To reach more of an audience. Even though that thing told me a moment ago, I'm going to reach 500,000. No. You're going to reach like 5% of that, even though it's telling me I'm going to reach 500. And 5% is just a value I made up. I don't know what the percentage is. I don't work for Facebook. I don't know what their algorithm is. No one really does. And whoever knows that is under a non-disclosure agreement that they will get sued to the next world if they expose this stuff. So the way we use Facebook effectively nowadays is to pay to reach an audience, to pay to reach the right audience, um, which could be as little as one dollar. Good news. Well, let's do bad news. Bad news. You should pay to reach the audience. Bad, uh, good news. It can be for as little as one dollar. I have zero followers right now, and I'm going to post something on Facebook every day. I may then, in a week, get one follower, or maybe it takes two weeks. Well, I have zero followers. Here's another scenario. I have zero followers, but I have a dollar that I found behind the couch, and then I pay Facebook one dollar, and I could reach a hundred people, and that might result in 12 followers in one week. For one dollar, I got 12 followers. This is different than buying followers. This is totally different. Don't ever do that. Don't buy followers. Don't go to those shady websites that says, buy a thousand Facebook followers for five dollars. Don't do that. That's fake. You're going to get fake spam bots that are not going to buy your product. You're going to have a number that says, my page has 5,000 likes. Worthless, because they're not buying anything. They're not calling you. They're not 
active. They're just spam bots. They're a fake number. I would rather have 12 real followers that are going to buy stuff than 5,000 fake followers. So, um, two ways to approach this. Boost posts or Facebook ad manager. easier. Boosting posts is easier. We'll look at both, but boosting posts is easier. Facebook man ad manager, more powerful, meaning not as easy. But both of them are the same sort of idea. We pay Facebook some amount of money to reach an audience. And early on, we have to set aside the thought of this, like, this is a ripoff. I'm going to pay Facebook to reach the people. One like doesn't equal one follow anymore, this is a ripoff. Of course it is. But in the real world, that's what you have to do. You have to pay for that billboard. It's not free. You have to pay for those um, radio ads. That's not free. You have to pay the person flipping that sign around on the corner. Advertising, marketing in the real world is not free. There is word of mouth, but word of mouth is harder on online because there's so many people online. So we have to get past the indignity of paying Facebook or any of these networks, because you can do this on Twitter, you can do this on Pinterest, you can do this on all the networks, on YouTube. You can pay to reach more of an audience, and it works, because the companies keep doing it. They keep offering us the ability to pay to reach more audience, because it works, for better or for worse. But as I said, you can pay as little as a dollar, and you already start to see some results. It doesn't mean really that one dollar will result in ten sales. It may be one sale, but that one sale recuperated your dollar. Maybe you paid a hundred dollars and you got ten sales. Those ten sales recuperated your hundred dollars five times. Who knows? It depends on your business, your product, your ad, how effective it is. We'll talk about all of that. But the big idea, the big secret of Facebook that I want you to know is that to use Facebook effectively, you should use Facebook ads. Yes. Yeah. Dollar, that's a dollar per ad or a dollar per post? Ad and post is sort of similar, the same thing. So yes, one dollar per ad, one dollar per post. So um, we'll look at both. We'll look at first boosting a post and then we'll look at the ad manager. So I'm on Facebook and the way you boost a post. Um, you might see here and there throughout the Facebook screen something about promote. That's going to take you to the more powerful ad manager. Um, so we don't want that one yet. Let's do this. If you if you go back to the home page of your of your business, and you scroll down a little bit, you will see write something. You will see write some text, share a photo. I don't know, create an event. We have something to share, like every network. Let's say I start to write something. And I'm going to say sale this Saturday. 10% off. Use our code. Sale 99. Well, I have zero followers. No one's going to see it. But I could start to have people see it because next to publish is boost. Boost your post to reach more people. That is paying to reach more people. Before we click on that, now you're not going to be charged right away. You're not going to be charged at all, don't worry. Because um, you need a credit card set up and all of that, which I'll get to. But for the moment, if I was writing my message, if I was sharing my photo, my video, whatever I'm sharing, I have the option to boost. I would recommend that you first post what you want to promote. First publish what you want to promote. Because if you try to start this whole boost process, you're juggling two things. Setting up the ad at the same time you haven't posted your actual content. If something happens and the screen resets or it crashes or something, you lose everything. I haven't finished making my post because I was in the middle of still boosting it and it's gone. It didn't get saved in a draft or whatever. So 
I would recommend you first publish so that it's set. It published, it's not going to go away if the screen resets, if my computer crashes, it's been published. And then after the fact, you have the option to boost it. And I think that's a lot safer. So, recommendation. Post something first, or publish something first. Text, photo, video, link, blog, whatever. boost it. Instead of trying to do both of those actions at once, just do one action. Because once it goes wrong one time, you'll remember that you should have done it this way. So I posted something. The something is harder to teach because everyone's a little different. And as I said on, every, on the two previous days, I have to talk in general terms for a whole class of 25 people. For individual people, how to write an ad for my business. That ad is going to be a great idea for your realty business, but there are no other realtors in the class. So I'm not going to focus on, in, on individual ads, what kind of ad should I write, because again, socialmediaexaminer.com is going to give you plenty of ideas and advice on how to create posts for your business. Facebook also itself in the help system has a whole tutorial on recommendations uh, under help over here they has its own recommendations on how to make effective ads it will tell you itself these kinds of ads work best for your business so instead of me giving advice on what kind of ad I would recommend social media examiner or go into the Facebook help how to create an ad for a realtor it's going to give you all this advice about how to set up the best ads. I can talk us through the process of boosting and the details and the advice on that, but for exact ads, you can talk individually a little bit more. But let's say, okay, sell this ad. This is a terrible ad. It doesn't say the percentage. It doesn't have a link. It doesn't have a photo. It's terrible. But Facebook will gladly take my money. I click boost. Then you get a screen that's sort of similar to that preferred audience. But who am I trying to target? And it's a complex screen to look at the first time. But first I have to set an audience. I already have a few audiences set up here, but I'll create one in a moment. I have an audience, the Healthy Eating Fans audience. I created it. These are the people that I've decided I want to target. Wealthy Baked Goods aficionados. So these are those that I'm trying to target. To show you what that is, you can click Create New Audience. This brings up something very similar to what we saw before. Gender, Age, Location, Interests. And it'll tell you right here what range you're in as a good amount of targeting. Too small, too specific, won't work. Too broad, you're not going to catch people. Somewhere around there will be your audience. And it'll also tell you, yours is fairly broad, 31 million. If you get it lower down here, but not into the red, Facebook is telling you this will more, more likely reach the right people. So to take, back, to, stay, to take a step back, again, I'm paying Facebook to show that post, number one, to more of my followers. The ones that chose to like, more of them will see it. But it will go beyond to find new people that you have not connected with. So it does both of those tasks. Um, example group. I'm creating a group of the people I'm targeting. Male and female, uh, 45 and up, location California, interests of cookies. This is one million potential people, still fairly broad. I can specify a little bit more. Healthy eating, which may sound that it doesn't quite 
come together, but there will be a little segment of the Venn diagram of people that love cookies and healthy eating. There will be a spot. Let's say eating healthy. Still a little broad, but you get the idea that I'm creating, this is also known as segmentation. I'm creating a segment of the population. I'm trying to do via location, not California, let's do Pacific Beach. Okay, Ocean Beach. Okay, La Jolla. Okay, so I reach an audience. It's telling me this audience is great. 81,000. 81,000 is obviously a lot smaller than a million. Isn't a million better than 81,000? No. If Facebook itself is telling me that this is a good audience, that you could reach the right audience. So I've made a name of this group. I've chosen gender, age, location, hobbies, interests, etc. I would then save this. And this is how I can target per individual post the right people. So on that other screen of setting preferred audience, that's for the whole page in general. This is the one that's really going to work the best, the right people. And I can change it per post. I have all of these that I've created previously that I can select to target. Your post, your, your published item, will appear on people on the desktop to look like this. It'll say sponsored. So yeah, it's going to be an ad. But you see that already. You log into Facebook, you see stuff that might be interesting to you, and below it is a sponsor. Someone paid for you to see it. You may never have clicked it, but they still paid for them for you to see it. X amount of money. One dollar, one thousand dollars. Facebook will take any amount. Mobile news feed. This is how it's going to look on people on their mobile device. So they log into Facebook on the app. You'll see sponsored by that will pop up. This is a terrible ad. No one will like it. There's no picture. There's no link. There's no. There's nothing. It's just an example. But people can then desert, decide to like it, comment it, share, or click your link, click your product. Okay, scrolling down. Next we come to budget. Yes? Yeah, there's a way to go into a different screen where you can manage all your audiences to delete the ones you don't want anymore. Yeah. Okay, so budget. Um, this is recommending $20. I have a potential of 540000 that I could reach. Based on this budget, I can reach between 2,000 and 5,900. That does not mean 2,000 guaranteed sales. That does not mean 5,000 guaranteed sales. This doesn't guarantee anything except that people will see it. Just like the radio company does not guarantee five sales from you running your ad on the radio at 5 p.m. rush hour. Just like you pay $2 million on the Super Bowl and they don't guarantee that you will get a thousand sales. They just say, we will show your ad or play your ad at the right time, how you specify. It's still up to you to have a good ad. It's still up to you to have a good product, but we'll take your money. Facebook does it, Twitter does it, you know, the Union Tribune does it, the Penny Saver does it, the Star News, they all do it. They all advertise and they all take your money. It's up to you to make a good ad to reach the right people. Yeah. So when we pick the location, Facebook is saying, Okay, we're going to show 3 million people, but we're pretty sure 10,000 is pretty Yeah. Yeah. See it, at least. Mm -hmm. So price-wise, guess what? If you go up to $200, oh, 18,000 people. Not 18,000 sales, but even if you take 1% of those sales, what's 1% of 18,000? 180, maybe? 18? I'm not a math major. Let's say 180. 180. 180. Oh, so. I'm sorry. 18. 18. Okay, 18 sales. That sounds terrible, but I'm selling million dollar houses. <laughs> so I made up for it. Okay, I'm, sa I'm selling baby carriages. You know, $100 baby carriages. I sold 18 carriages, I made back my money. Just like in the real world. You spend X amount of money on the radio, and if you sell enough 
of that product you've made back your investment in the radio ad and more, perhaps. I don't see here one dollar, I see five dollars. Don't be, don't be fooled, you can click choose your own. One dollar. Okay, 120 people for one dollar. Now that's way lower than a moment ago, but 120 people seeing my ad is not bad at all, even at the minimum of 120. On the more optimistic level, 320 people, that's fine. 320 people see it, 120 people see it or in between, and maybe I make one sale out of one dollar. Maybe I make two sales out of one dollar. Money well spent. Don't buy that latte this this week or today. <laughs> Cut back on your latte budget and spend it on Facebook ads and you're going to see you'll have more lattes later down the road when you make more sales. So you set, you set an audience, you set a budget, you set a duration. For one day, Facebook will attempt to show my ad to the most relevant people for one dollar. Not by the number of clicks or the number of likes or whatever. Just one dollar to show your ad to more people. That's all you get charged. Google, via their ad system, charges you per click. So if I have a budget of ten dollars, every click is going to deplete that budget down to zero. Whereas here, fifty dollars is just going to have my ad continually being shown to people no matter how many click, how many, no matter how many ignore. Well, I want this ad to be to run for a whole week. You need to run, you need to spend at least one dollar per day, so you need seven dollars. Facebook will promote your content for seven days, seven dollars, a dollar per day. You can do longer than two weeks to spend more. Does it let you choose what time it goes on? No. Facebook determines that on a variety of factors that are proprietary, so we cannot choose the time. But by choosing our audience, that helps guide them to be what time. So I want, I want this to run for 92 days. I need at least $92. <laughs> So let's say I'm on a budget, I got five dollars, I'm not gonna buy a coffee today. And so for seven days or five days, let this run. There's an option here about a Facebook pixel, which is a little complex to talk about. But basically what Facebook can do, what all of these ad systems can do, the Twitter ad system, the Facebook ad system, the YouTube ad, ad system, it can tell you theoreticals in their system. It'll tell you how many can be reached in Facebook. It'll tell you how many clicked in Facebook and such. But then when people leave Facebook or leave Twitter, it, 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 it can't track that anymore. It can't keep track of then someone went to your home page, then they went to your product page, then they clicked buy. These ad systems cannot track that unless you activate, for example, on Facebook, the ad pixel, the Facebook pixel. Add this code to your website to report conversions, see activity, and build an audience. So if you go through this process, which is kind of technical, and we don't have a time to talk about it, but if you go through this process, you can add the Facebook pixel to your site where Facebook will continue to track people through their journey on their site. If they came from your Facebook post to your website, Facebook can continue to track it to give you even more stats about which ad worked, which one didn't. Yes? Do I have to click on your website on Facebook for that to work? Yes. They have or, to... or can you go on a different browser and go to your browser? This is set up to follow a person coming from the ad. That's how Facebook can track that. If they came from different browsers and such, Facebook can't quite track it. And does it have to be specifically a boosted ad? It can be any of the ad things that we do. It's not going to work from a non-boosted post. Oh, it does have to be a, from a boosted Yeah. Can they charge for that? Nope. It's part of this uh, dollar that I'm about to spend. 
so for the notes here, I would say um, create an audience based on the green meter. That meter at the bottom saying great, because it'll give you different feedback. Try to create an audience that says great, that you've reached a good audience, not too big, not too small. Spend whatever you want. Hint, more money, more good. So if you spend a little bit more, you reach more audience, you reach more audience, you get more impressions, more conversions. But whatever budget, one dollar is fine. When we do this for clients, we are often spending between thirty and fifty dollars every few weeks, depending on the on the company and the competition and a variety of factors. For most of us, you're going to get great results by spending, you know, five dollars every other week, or once a month, or even one dollar one time. That way, you can figure out what what works. Start with a broad, broader, or a broad-ish audience, then uh, narrow it based on past uh, results. Those That insights screen will tell you your activity that happened organically, meaning for free, and paid. So I spent a dollar this week and I reached a certain audience. Next week I'll spend another dollar. Next week I'll spend another dollar. Based on all that information, I then decide I'm going to spend $10 this week and create an ad uh, based on one that worked previously. So start a little bit wider and then get narrower. And then, if possible, set up the Facebook pixel. It's kind of technical. We don't have time to talk about it. You need a website. You need to edit a little bit of code. It's a little technical. If possible, set up the Facebook pixel for complete tracking data. The last items on this screen are, I've already got a credit card set up, so I'm ready to, to boost this. If you don't have a credit card, it'll ask you to first set it up. So any credit card works. PayPal works also. Debit cards too, I believe. Uh, what I would say is use, use a credit card, not a debit card. Credit cards have more consumer protection. If there's some fraud that happens, you have more protection via a credit card than a debit card. Your debit card is, is you know, that money is subtracted from your, from your bank very quickly, relatively, on a credit card. The money is, is transferred, it's gone. A credit card, you know, it's fake money. It's, it's American Express saying, yeah, you have a $5,000 credit limit, sure. It's fake until it gets used. It's not real until it gets used. So disputes via fraud and all of that are handled better via credit card. And then here's this another one. Too many notifications. Mm -hmm. Send me updates and tips for ads that are created and managed under this account. So updates and tips. It's going to send you messages like a text message from your family that tells you why not try this ad. This one I might feel you might want to leave this one on because if you're a beginner to all of this, there's a lot to learn. And even if we spent the whole three hours only on Facebook ads, there's still a lot to learn for individual people. So maybe getting a message once in a while about how to use Facebook ads more effectively might be useful, and that can be turned on and off. But be advised that you will start to get more text messages if you leave that on. I'm going to cancel this because I don't actually want to publish this, but set your audience, set your budget, set your time, boost, and you're going to start to see results. People always tell me, 
you know, Elite come back next time and people do this, people always tell me, I tried it, I spent $2 and it worked, I got one phone call, mm -hmm. or it worked and I got a few more clicks on my website, I got more visibility. And then what will work is you do it more. You do it more often, you spend more, like in the real world. People stop paying attention to you, you know, why, why does McDonald's still need to do ads? They've been around 60 years. But they've got competition from Wendy's and Burger King and all of that. Now, I don't really see ads on TV anymore for In-N-Out. I haven't seen an ad for In-N-Out in a while on TV, I think. Yeah. On radio, I hear them less. But maybe they're at a point they don't need to advertise anymore. Maybe they're on social media. So advertising, even for big established companies, they still do it. They, they need to stay relevant and on people's minds. Yes. On this audience thing, it, you know how they do Facebook groups? Mm -hmm. they, do they connect it with their, their business page? Do you can do Facebook ads through their Facebook groups? I'm not something? sure. I don't use groups that much, so I'm not the best person to, to answer that. Facebook groups. Sometimes they do private, sometimes they do, but sometimes I know they try to sell ads in there, but I did not do if it's connected with their ad. Since that's similar audience. Possibly. I, I don't know. That's something I need to educate myself on. I don't really manage any groups for any of the clients. It doesn't seem that for our clients they really benefit from a group. So what we're doing in there is, you know, we're just doing the regular ads. Yes? I have an Instagram account set up, and so it said you want to do it also on Instagram. So I'm thinking you get Instagram and Facebook. That's a good point. Same, well, we, same price. When we talk about Instagram, which will be in a couple of weeks, if you hadn't heard by now, uh, Facebook owns Instagram. Yeah. They own Instagram and they own uh, Instagram and the other. So Facebook bought Instagram for a few billion dollars a few years ago, yeah. and it's been a good payoff for them. Uh, more and more people are using Instagram. You know, people that maybe are tired of Facebook are on Instagram. Well, Facebook owns both. You're not going to get away from them. And it's working. Uh, big audience. The audience of Instagram is larger than Twitter now. They're at 500 million users and Twitter's at 330 million users. So based on ads, if you've got Instagram for your business, you can link your Instagram and your Facebook for the business. And then when you create an ad, you'll have the option to also publish this on Instagram. So you get Instagram for free. And you would reach your Instagram audience with the same amount that you paid that you're reaching your Facebook audience. We will talk in detail about Instagram in a couple of weeks, part two of the class. But on that day, um, I'll remind us one week before that day, to use Instagram, you want to have a device. You can't really use Instagram very well on a regular computer. So I'll remind us. I believe it's going to be three weeks from now, because next week is going to be Pinterest, then LinkedIn, then Instagram. But I'll remind us in two weeks. You need to bring a device, a phone or a tablet, to use Instagram effectively. The last thing we'll look at, then we've got to wrap up pretty quickly, the time is shorter than I thought, is the other, the other um, ad system is if you click on the triangle at the top, you have Manage Ads. You have the more powerful and therefore complex ad system. <clears throat> on the triangle at the top right corner, you can click on that. Go to Manage Ads. <clears throat> so in this system is going to be the other way for you to fully create an ad more powerfully. The top bar at the top over there, those three little lines. Here. Create ads, measure your results, set up your pixels. So this is as far as I'll go with this because it's a lot to look at. But there are there is the help system for all of these things. This is where you set up your credit card. So all of these items to look at, ad manager, power editor. For most of us, it'll be just fine to boost your posts. You'll get great results. But when you want to get more advanced to, to find the right audience and such, you want to go to the manage ads. And you go up to ad manager and so forth. When you're, do, when, you're, when you're in this kind of manager, it's going to kind of ask you, well, what are these, what's your goal? What, what are you trying to do? 
we have awareness consideration. So much more complexity. I want to deal with getting views for my video. I want to sell. I want to convert on my store. This will guide you more about how to create a more effective ad. Let me find that again because it's kind of hard to get to. If you go back to Facebook, the fastest way to get there is if you click your triangle. Create ad. That's going to take you. Manage ads is even more complex. You can just go to create ad directly and there you will see well, look at this. Facebook is telling me we're going to give you ten dollars off to use this post. <laughs> so sometimes you get those little pop-ups. Spend ten, get ten for free. So if you go to create ads, it goes directly here. What kind of ad? Again, much more complex, but there's a whole help system that you can look into. Short answer: just boost your posts for the for the moment. We're going to wrap up. Um, can you show us again how to delete this fictitious page? Yes, to delete it, what you can do is when you go back to the to your page under the settings, let me go back again. Under settings, the last item. So if you wanted to delete this, you can go back to the you can go back to the settings of this page and you can go down to settings, remove the page, and then you'll confirm and this will be deleted. Mine says it will be deleted in 14 days. Yeah, uh, that's another change that for some people, it, it, it won't delete it for 14 days because you may can't change your mind. Maybe I don't really want to delete it. It thinks we might change our mind. So just wait 14 days and it'll be gone. So to wrap up the class, what we'll talk about is um, this is the last day of the class. Next week, we're going to need to register again. We will do the registration process pretty quickly next time. We'll start then with a brand new network, Pinterest. Tell your friends and family they don't need to have taken part one. They can come directly to part two. Day one, part two, next Friday. Thank you for coming.